Thank you all for staying to the last keynote. And um, um, do you know how many talks already before this one and this conference? Um, it's over 100. And um, I have learned a lot from the keynote talks and the technical talks um, from, talk, from the demos. So I first really want to say thank you. I learned a lot, the insights, the ideas, the details. And um, I want to also take this chance to thank LFN and the local organizers for um, having such a nice event on this spot. Um, but I come for ONS, or ONS, but I think I come for something nicer, chocolate. <laughs> I'm a chocolate collector. So if anyone is interested in chocolate, we definitely can talk after this. It's just so nicer when I add the chocolate to the ONS template. Um, and make the 5G AI orchestration look nicer, cute. And the animals, uh, and the cocos, <laughs> they just feel lovely. Um, so I don't exactly know what I should I cover because uh, I'm the last one. And uh, the time when I prepare my slides, I didn't know what the talks would be. So um, to be safe, so I put all the terms on the screen. Uh, 5G AI orchestration. And so talk about 5G. Uh, China Mobile, well, all the operators probably in the world offer 5G available in 2019. This is our offering, 5G to be available, commercially available for 50 cities, major cities in 2019. You might try to look at the, where the red dots are. You don't need to worry, I guess, all the cities in this room probably, as a community. You have visited and you are visiting and you will visit. I guess it's all covered. All the major cities will be available. As always, China Mobile does. Uh, we offer more than we promised. I guess uh, if you go to China, a rural place, you got 5G in this year, and don't be super surprised. And uh, uh, 5G Plus. And uh, I don't know why in the recent couple of years, we all just, not just the tech, we all just love the sign plus. Um, I've, in the back to June this year, the top officers from China Mobile announced our 5G Plus strategy, 5G Plus plan. There are a few calculations if you are good at math. And it depends on who taught you math. You may learn your math from your art teacher or humanity teacher, you get a different answer. So first one is 5G plus uh, 4G. Uh, we have 5G available, but for a long period of time, we know we're going to operate the network of 5G plus 4G. And uh, we um, need to find the best way to uh, have both together and to offer the top quality network for our customer. And the second one is 5G plus five letters. Um, they're just not simple letters. It means a serious business. It means where we're going to put our investments on. Um, a, I, C, D, E. Um, a means artificial intelligence. I uh, means an uh, internet of things, cloud computing, C, big data, and edge. I don't think we missed anything big. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, with all this great technologies coming up, I think it's important to uh, have, you know, have 5G or a network to be more innovative. We can do way more innovative with 5G plus these technologies. And uh, each letter means something pretty big. Um, I will not, not going to cover all of them, but I will open up the A part the artificial intelligence, what we have done, and we, what we have in mind. Um, the ecosystem, not, you know, 5G is not only a business. We're going to empower ourselves. We're going to also support the, how we can uh, foster an ecosystem um, to empower other industry sectors. Among them, there are nine um, major industry sectors we strategically invest in. Um, I just examples are finance, manufacturing, smart city, transportation, education, 
um, agriculture, um, there are nine, nine of them. And we, had, we did a reorg, have organizations and dedicate to put a 5G for those industry sectors. Okay, with that big, big picture talk about, now we come to 5G uh, plus A, artificial intelligence. Um, last uh, ONS, I talk about w a little bit of what we have done for artificial intelligence. But now we announced um, the platform, the engine called the Jiu Tian, means the highest heaven uh, or the ninth heaven. Um, it's come from a very well-known Chinese poetry. In the end, you're going to see uh, how that poetry looks like. Um, so pretty much we, um, we're trying to apply AI for major five major areas in the business. Um, customer service, marketing, management, security, and network. Um, so we collectively, we built this platform, we unify our internal AI efforts to be a, on the same platform, provide the computation power, data, uh, computing and networking environment, algorithm solutions. We also uh, use this platform to enable other industries and, and talk a few applications, you know, from the last conference to this one in the past couple of months, uh, a few larger scale applications that we delivered to the, the business value. I think it's a larger scale to just give a couple of examples. Uh, for the management, we apply natural language processing and, uh, and data analytics into uh, auditing. Um, uh, the invoices and the paperwork and our formal contract. And we also apply the conversational engine on our uh, OA system and um, um, a few other smaller and about really fun ones I'm not going to cover here. And for the marketing, um, we uh, put a quite lots of efforts in working on the recommendation technology. we we'll apply that to run our home TV service. Um, that really help a lot, uh, improve our user experience, improve our, in, uh, our uh, revenue. And uh, we also enable our business to uh, serve a few hundreds of hospitals using our conversational agent. Um, and Customer service. This one I mentioned last time. We, we have chatbots, we have the routing, call routing agent, we have the uh, back office, lots of smaller uh, tools to put into the customer care uh, back office that really drive down the uh, customer care costs. And that's why we can offer really lower uh, data usage rate for our customers. And uh, the harder ones are the network and the security. Um, so I, we have the, uh, um, put out a few applications into network. Just, uh, here I list the one example. Basically, it's using um, natural language um, technology, um, speech recognition, and plus um, machine learning to, for the decision make. And when, you, when we hear customer call us to complain certain problem, we're going to have to you know, dive in to find what was the, uh, how we can solve this problem. That takes a long process to hear the message and transcribe um, to certain text. We have to extract certain information from, and then we have to have someone who really, um, with a lot of network um, maintenance uh, experience to go into to uh, check into probably over 20 different databases to pull out the data to analyze what was the problem. Basically, we, we collectively uh, combine these technologies and to automate this process. The efficiency got improved 90% to save quite lots of money for the company. Um, there are a few others, and um, by just examples to give here. Uh, for the security, um, now security can be for information security, for network security, 
uh, to see, give one example how we uh, help our customer to fight the, the spamming phone calls. Because um, nowadays, not only you have a human call you to try to sell you something, you have lots of robots call you. Uh, so we put out the technology for speech, using speech uh, recognition, using speak identification, and based on and plus the data analytics, analytics trying to detect which calls are spamming phone calls. That was on the central TV, uh, one of the popular program in China, um, in back to August. Um, I mentioned we hosted a nationwide competition, and um, we have two, one for a smart family, the other one for a network. We have close to 400 teams um, join the competition, and the final, uh, the 40 top performing ones are selected for second round. Um, after this trip, after they go back to China, we will have the uh, final competition. We have two topics, so we give the data uh, network data flow prediction and wireless default due to cost anal analytics. Um, just uh, I know uh, several companies here are involved. And some developers are here also. Thank you for the work. Really, we push up, uh, we, we push ahead the accuracy and the performance, the technology. And orchestration. Um, this is a big thing for the community for ONAP. And what we're going to orchestrate. I mean, what orchestration means for 5G. And uh, we have the NSA network, SA slicing. And it, you can look at the horizontal line and the vertical line. Um, there are way more things that we can orchestrate. You can orchestrate WinF, SDN, network services, slicing, edge, um, container in the future, and, uh, and, uh, and the RAM part. Um, for the orchestration, and we need to, to do it across vendors, we need to cross domains, across layers. Um, so if orchestration uh, was an option for 5G, I don't think it's an option anymore for 5G, because the service offer will be way more complicated, and uh, um, we opened up the, in, in the bottom infrastructure has changed. So I'm thinking um, orchestration is important, for 5G, is not an option anymore, the, no matter the depth and the breadth for the orchestra. What are we going to orchestrate? Um, so is life good now? We have 5G and AI. You can orchestrate 5G. You can use AI to uh, further help 5G. And uh, we can put all things together. Um, but I want to seriously uh, talk a few questions I think we still need to work on. Um, um, I, I come when I look at the ONS page, the schedule, we have more than 10 talks on um, AI, or at least the matching AI, but different tastes, different flavor, different parts of AI. Um, what, um, you know, is, do we, I just try to, um, I try to give an overall picture where we stand on the AI for telecom for the for the network. Um, so we um, we look at the uh, standardization organizations, so how they think of putting AI and the future network together. Um, more of on the infrastructure level and how sh AI the component should be connected. We talk about AI for edge. Um, but I'm thinking is 5G and AI has, um, they mutually help each other because there is a challenge for the AI technologies. It's really expensive for any AI technology. And after you developed how you can really deliver larger scale and you offer uh, that into different industrial sectors, you deliver the uh, business value on top of the technology is a challenge. And uh, I think 5G is here, can help to spread out the technology, really make it uh, AI more ubiquitous, uh, available everywhere. Um, but should we, so all the devices, 5G is going to connect and will be um, empowered or enabled by several different levels of intelligence. So now the question, 
And so it's safe to give questions to versus I answer all the questions. So uh, I want to talk about should AI, should our network itself should be intelligent? How should be how it should be intelligent and where we are now? A few questions for discussion. Um, so I mentioned a couple of examples. I can see in the literature, not only in industry, in the um, in the uh, AI conferences, there are certain thoughts, certain spots where we apply AI technology for certain parts of the network. Um, my question is, should AI be systematically available for 5G? Do we have the uh, infrastructure, or do we seriously think what's the best way we collect the data? Um, which kind of way we collect the data is most cost effective? and really can reflect directly and uh, cost effectively and for uh, sen to sense the quality, the status of the network, to sense the uh, user experience. Um, so I'm thinking, have been lots of thoughts and uh, into uh, the stand in the standardization uh, paperwork and in each company, so I don't think we are there yet uh, to, you know, how of all we should do it. Second is what is, but when we talk about AI, uh, I just came back from a, um, before this trip, I attended a international conference on speech recognition. Um, so I always think we work on network intelligence, but what is, what is our main math problem? Um, I think I mentioned this last time, is on what level we need to do the abstraction. Um, so uh, we, can, we can take the AI technologies, which mainly developed for uh, speech, for image, for natural language processing, we apply to our network uh, for analytics. And is that enough? Is our problem unique enough to need, need different set of technology to solve and what we can contribute back. Um, I don't think it's clear, um, but I'm thinking the AI technology is developing, it's, it's improving um, at a pace which I have never experienced in the past 20 years in the, in the um, uh, AI field. Um, so um, I just want to add a few words. So for the uh, for the for the mainly for the uh, AI was the, the current state of art AI technology pretty much designed for uh, image processing, for video, for speech, for natural language. Um, but the network is different uh, kind of a problem. Personally, I think because we the AI technology is trying to. Um, trying to do what we human unconsciously to do, because we recognize face, we don't know how to describe how we recognize face, we recognize voice, but we don't know how to do it. And then you design a technology you are trying to do what we unconsciously, how we unconsciously think. But our, tech, our network is what we, is human designed. It's not a naturally um, formed thing. So, uh, but uh, the network become way and way more complicated and I'm thinking AI coming, instead of handling the unconscious thinking, here is needs to handle the complexity. Um, so uh, talk about where the intelligence come from when we say we want our network to be intelligent, to be ready for, uh, so we can, so the network can connect all the intelligent devices. So the intelligence, there's three different resources where the intelligence can come from. You can learn your technology, you can learn a model from data, you can build up on top of your knowledge base, you can, uh, uh, you can have a environment where you can do trial to get the feedback and then you can find, uh, fine tune your model. But I think for network, we are lack of, for the three foundations, I don't think we are, we are um, anywhere closer. We don't have a huge uh, corpus which can represent um, our typical problems in the larger scale available open. And uh, we don't have that huge knowledge base we can all leverage on to 
manage to operate our network in, uh, in an intelligent way. We don't have an environment we can do trial on. Um, everything's pretty small. If you look at the other technical papers, even in the top conference for telecom, and all the professors are trying to have a very small network in their lab, and then they do the experiments on, which is far uh, different from what we see in the real industry. And what are the state-of-art AI technologies? You know, we often think AI is something you give data, you give it X and trying to generate Y, but AI has been quite different from what was before. Um, we need to really know and understand the technology, then know how to put that into the network operation. Um, is our uh, problem different from the typical AI problem as of today? I already mentioned a couple ideas. We can have more discussions. Um, so um, where we stand, um, we, you know, um, I think China Mobile made a decision. We determined to work on solving these fundamental science problems and the engineering problems with the industry and uh, with the um, researchers in the field. Uh, we established a few labs with the top universities to collaborate. We look forward to collaborate with the community too. So at the end, uh, I said that the uh, name or the engine of our platform, Jiu Tian, come from a poetry. Uh, so it looks beautiful. Um, it's hard to translate, so we'll leave it that way. Um, And uh, last page, and thank you all. And we have a few booths uh, touch a little bit on what I talked about. If you haven't uh, come to the demo, to the booth, please do. Thank you. <laughs>